course, we're going to be here right by the red carpet, hoping to get a question into George Clooney. Is there any explanation for what so many people heard or saw in the sky? And this reads like a good book. Every page you turn, you can't stop. You want to read more. Certainly not ideal conditions to do anything, let alone fight a fire. If you're traveling in a car, take shelter under an overpass. That may be one of the biggest myths. And this sticker may tell it all. Ditch Mitch. The party is going to go long into the night. Just outside the back door of the restaurant is where Feck made his pose to the camera. I'm doing some more digging here and I'll bring you the very latest of what I can find about this coming up at six o'clock. She was walking to school as she does every day here along Hamilton Street just up this hill but it's when she says she began to cross the street here when a man tried to abduct her. So young and so good I'm very jealous. Yeah we both are Mark <laughs> definitely. Yes and everybody does it you know you come to the grocery store you put your groceries from your cart into your trunk. Now, ladies, listen up. Here's what's happening to you. When you're finished, you close the trunk, and then you're going to take your cart and put it away. You leave your purse in your car, and you turn your back for that slight few seconds. Well, at that time, they're going in your car and stealing your purse. And from what we found, many of you are letting that happen. It didn't take long for us to find women returning their shopping carts without their purse on their arm. Instead, in their unlocked car. You put your purse in the car, and then you push the cart back. Roberta Atkins did the exact same thing, unloaded her groceries, then returned the cart. You notice, though, she doesn't have her purse with her. It's in the car. That eight to 10 seconds gave me time to do this. Instead of stealing her purse, which was sitting on the passenger seat, I left a blank piece of paper. So what, make sure I keep the door locked, right? Well, or keep your purse on your arm when you go to put the car back. That's a good idea. An idea this woman didn't seem to know about either. She drops her groceries off with purse in hand. Putting your groceries away. Yeah. You did that, and you ran over there, and I could have gone and got your purse real easy. I feel stupid, you got me on camera. <laughs> But you've learned something. Yes, I did. Thank you. Not everyone was as lackadaisical when leaving their car to return their baskets. Some women kept their purses on their shoulder. This woman, though, was even more cautious. Well, I locked my door. Was it locked? Yeah. It was locked? Yeah. You want me to try it? Uh -huh. yeah. It was locked when you walked over there? I promise you. Oh, yeah, it's good. That's good. Somebody could be behind you just as well. Mm -hmm. So I think I'd rather have it locked. Isn't as easy as it sounds, is it, ladies? Now, police do tell me it's best to keep your purse on your arm when you take that card away or just keep your car locked. Live in Lexington, I'm Mark Kennedy, WKYT 27 News First. Sam, at this point, all is scheduled to go on as planned. Around 8 o'clock, Marco Chapman will be executed here in Eddyville. Now, all day, we've been receiving briefings as to what his mood is like and what he has been asking for. His final meal request goes a little something like this. He asked for a 32-ounce sirloin steak, 20 butterfly shrimp, a tossed salad with an iced tea, and to top it all off with banana cream pie. Mark, I know you have been working very hard the last few days putting together and preparing stories for today and yesterday, but how have you prepared yourself for what you're going to see in just a little while, both mentally and emotionally for this? Well, a lot of people have asked me that question today. Of course, we've been working hard here today. I really haven't had a whole lot of time to think about that, but now with just under two hours to go, they've actually told me a little while ago, we have about 45 minutes until we're ushered inside the prison and then taken down to that execution chamber. I think for me, I try to keep it more in, in a journalistic perspective. I try not to think personally about it, but I really can't say until I get in there how I'm gonna feel. Certainly understandable. In yet another sign of the troubling times, Georgetown's mayor has announced more layoffs. It should have been one of the happiest days of their lives, but instead a Southern Kentucky family is left without a place to call home. A McCreary County family was at the hospital after the birth of their first child when flames ripped through their house on Copper Creek Road near the Wayne County line. A crash over the weekend is hitting students at the University of Kentucky very hard. John Kirksey III, a UK student, lost control of his car on the Bluegrass Parkway. Governor Bashir is spending some time in our nation's capital talking about some of the big issues facing our states. First time. Sergeant Willard Reardon of the Richmond Police Department and his fellow officers getting to know how a taser feels. Your whole body just really, every muscle in your body tenses up to where uh, 
you really have no movement whatsoever. That's the reason the Richmond police chief wants his officers to begin carrying tasers. Uh, this is another way that we can have something on us that's not really painful. It's not going to cause any kind of medical conditions. It's a good weapon, a defensive weapon for the officers to use to get somebody under control. Here's an example of that. An officer acting like he's a suspect. He tries to reach for a weapon. He's shocked from behind and almost instantaneously drops the weapon. Of a muscle contraction, it kind of locks your entire body so that uh, you're unable to fight through it. And that's the whole idea is, uh, is a chance for the officer to get there and control the person quickly. Stubborn old me couldn't believe what I was seeing and wanted to try it for myself. Yeah, regretting that decision. That is just stupid. <laughs> and all the officers agreed, one time for training purposes is more than enough. It's a feeling I've never had before, but I, I can assure you I don't want to do it again. <laughs> In Richmond, I'm Mark Kennedy. WKYT 27 News First. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. Or is it? Do you know what your neighbors are really saying about you? He's a creep. They're noisy during sex. And your house. The smell makes your toenails curl. It's a dump. And they're posting all of it on RottenNeighbor.com for everyone to see. It even maps out exactly where you live. Here's what we found. People here complain they have too many cars parked on the street. This one, they say, is overgrown and disgusting. And this one, someone says the color is just ridiculous. So we wanted to meet some of these so-called rotten neighbors. We found the owner of this home. I don't think I'm a rotten neighbor at all. Online, though, one of her neighbors calls her house an eyesore and way overgrown. I think it's despicable for someone who is jealous of a widow to turn them over to a website that doesn't even know me. Other so-called rotten neighbors wanted nothing to do with us. Their neighbors, though, took up for them. That's kind of a chicken way to do things. I wouldn't want to be on it. Especially when we're told one million people look at rotten neighbor every day. I think it's fine. She says when she's in the market for a house, she'll log on. That'd be a good one good way of finding some things out about the neighborhood. We tried to figure out who's made some of these postings, but no one would fess up. Okay. Just when you Since thought it was a beautiful day in your neighborhood. Could you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? You show up on RottenNeighbor.com. It's pretty bad if people don't have anything else to do than complain about their neighbors. They probably got a poor, pretty boring life. Won't you please? Won't you please? In your neighborhood, I'm Mark Kennedy. My neighbor. WKYT 27 News First.